for section uh, 7.5, <coughs> we are going to uh, finish our study of solutions to quadratic equations by dealing with uh, what if we have ax squared plus bx plus c. So if there is a bx term and the uh, <coughs> equation that we have is not factorable. Well, ultimately, we can use this technique that we're about to learn. We can use it with an equation that is factorable or not factorable. It really uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, whether it's factorable or not, we can still use this uh, technique. And the technique is what we call the quadratic formula. And then what's nice is the quadratic formula is going to give us solutions to any quadratic equation. So let's start with uh, page 385. If you look at your number one here, we have 2x squared plus 5x minus 2 equals 0. And whether this is factorable or not, <coughs> um, we can still use the quadratic equation. And again, we could factor here, but if it's not factorable, we definitely can't. We'd have to use the quadratic formula, but the bottom line is we can use the quadratic formula no matter what. Now, let's get to the quadratic formula itself. Ultimately, when we have this ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero situation, the quadratic formula tells us that the solutions to that are going to be the opposite of b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And ultimately, if we take our four, three numbers, a, b, and c, and we put them in pro appropriately and follow the order of operations, then we're going to get the two x values, which are the two x intercepts, which are the two solutions to the quadratic equation. So here's the order in which I would do this. And uh, if you follow this order carefully, um, I would suggest that it's uh, much easier to get correct each time. There's one other thing that they don't usually put in the book on this 4AC business over here. I would put that in parentheses. Um, I would just be careful with parentheses because you get negatives. Subtracting negatives, and ultimately, uh, people generally make mistakes by keeping not keeping that uh, keeping track of that very well. So here's what I would do. I would list the A, B, and C. This would be the process that I would follow. I'd list A, B, and C. That'd be step one. Step two is I'd calculate that B squared minus 4AC part first. That was, this is what we call the discriminant. And the discriminant <coughs> tells us something about the solutions, which we'll get to in a minute. And ultimately, in our case, our B is 5, so we'd go 5 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 2. And then we'd have 25 minus in the parentheses. We do the multiplication first. We'd have negative 16. And so we ultimately get 41 because we have a minus minus situation. Now, one thing uh, on the inside that the discriminant tells us is if we have a uh, 41, like there's something positive, keep in mind we're going to put that under the square root here in the, in the ultimate formula. And that tells us that uh, we're going to have, if we have discriminant greater than zero, like 41 in this case, we're going to have two real solutions, as we'll see in a few minutes. If we find that b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, we're going to have one real solution, which we'll see as well. And if we find that b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, then we're going to have two imaginary solutions. And thinking about why they're imaginary, because if you uh, get a negative here for the discriminant, you're going to put that negative under the square root, and just like we did in Lesson 7.3. We're going to have uh, answers that involve i, which of course are going to be our imaginary solutions. Okay? So continuing on here, once we calculate the discriminant, that's our b squared minus 4ac part. Now if we go to the entire formula, and we do opposite of b, that'd be negative 5 for us, plus and minus the square root of 41. We already calculated the 41. We don't need to do that again. And then 2 times 2 on the bottom is our 2a, if you will. And then ultimately, um, what I would do, and you can do this before or after at this point, you can uh, try to simplify the 41. We know that 41 can't be simplified. It's prime. And so therefore, our final answer then is going to be negative 5 plus and minus square root of 41 all over 4. And that would be our two solutions. And again, there are two solutions because one is negative 5 plus radical 41 divided by 4. And the other one is negative 5 minus radical 41 divided by 4. So those would be our two solutions to that quadratic equation. Okay. Let's take a look at another one here. I want you to look at number uh, 23 on your <coughs> practice test. So practice test 23, we have 5x squared minus 9x plus 5 equals 0. So once again, we will list our a, b, and c. We've got 5, negative 9, and 5. And if we calculate our discriminant, First, we're going to get negative 9 squared minus 4 times 5 times 5. And in this particular case, we're going to get 81. 
here, and over here we're going to get uh, 100. And you'll notice this time, and again, one thing to be careful of is when you put this negative 9 in here, uh, some people again make mistakes by making this negative, but remember we're squaring a negative, so we ultimately better get something positive out of that first term no matter what we put in there. And we get negative 19. So based on our earlier work, we said that if we have something less than 0 as our discriminant, we're going to get two imaginary solutions because we're going to put this negative 19 underneath the radical. So if we do that, we're going to do, again, here's our formula here, we're going to do opposite of b. So our b is negative 9, so opposite of negative 9 is going to be positive 9 plus and minus the square root of negative 19, all over 2 times 5, our a being 5 here. And <coughs> with that, the only thing we can do with 19 is, uh, if we were to simplify that over here on the side, we could change it to negative 1 and 19, which means it'd be i radical 19. 19, if you put it in the box, does not simplify. And so our final answer then is going to be 9 plus and minus i radical 19, all over 10. 2 times 5 on the bottom gives us our 10. And that would be our final answer for our two solutions to number 23. Okay, let's look at uh, one more <coughs> quadratic equation. We'll look at uh, number uh, number five on your uh, book assignment, which is again on page 385, just to have one more in our arsenal here. Uh, one thing that uh, it says in your notes also is to make sure that you get everything on the same side here. So if we move the 4t and 3 onto the left side and identify our a as 1, our b as negative 4, and our c as negative 3, and then we calculate our discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, and then this is now negative 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 3, and in this case we're going to get 16 minus, and over here we're going to get negative 12, and so therefore we get 28 as our discriminant which means we're going to have two positive solutions here. And <coughs> ultimately, the uh, negative b part is going to be 4, opposite of b, plus and minus, square root of 28, all over 2 times 1. Now here's another situation where this is the final answer, and the answer is no, because 28 can be reduced. If we put a 28 in a box, we can divide that by 2 and get 14, divide that by 2 and get 7, so we ultimately get 2 radical 7. And so the final step, as we'll see here, is going to be the following. We're going to write that as 2 radical 7 instead. And then there's one final possible step here, and it hasn't occurred in the other two, but it did in this one. If we have a 4, a 2, and a 2 out of these two parts, so all three of these parts are, have something in common, then what it boils down to is we can reduce these three together. And again, only reducible if all three have the same factor. And in this case, all these can be divided by 2. We'll get 1, 1, and 2. So our final answer here would be 2 plus and minus radical 7. So that can only happen again if we have the, the three numbers that are outside the radical, in this position, this position, and this position. If they can all be divided by the same factor, then we definitely want to do that. It's just like reducing a fraction. But again, it only works if we have 2. If you were to have 4 plus and minus radical 7 over 2 and you did that, that would be absolutely 100% wrong. So do not do that. So. Again, it only works if we have all three parts, so do not do it if only two of the parts have a common factor. It needs to be all three positions. Okay, okay. The, uh, <coughs> that's the gist of using the quadratic formula. So at this point, we have the uh, means to find the solutions to any quadratic equation, which is uh, nice. And then uh, from here on out, uh, for the rest of the section here, we're going to look at some problems from our, chat, our practice test that are just going to be... Uh, some more techniques and uses of dealing with quadratic equations. And so we're going to start with our uh, number 19 here on our practice test, which uh, ultimately asks us to find a quadratic model using the values in the table and then predict the value for, of y when x equals 4. So ultimately we're going to do just like we did with linear equations and exponential equations. We're going to do our stat, and edit, we're going to take and put our numbers in our list, negative 1, 0, and 3, and negative 2, 3 and negative 18. And when we do our stat calculate this time, we're going to find quadratic regression because we're writing a quadratic equation that goes through these three points. And so just like we did with linear regression and exponential regression, we're just going to do quadratic regression. So by doing so, we'll get our ax squared plus bx plus c is our general formula. And so our final answer is just put in negative 3 and 2 and 3 into the proper spots for a, b, and c. And we have our final answer, which would be negative 3x squared plus 2x plus c, uh, plus 3. 
Now they've also asked us to use, uh, use the equation to make a prediction for y when x equals 4. And as we've done in the past, I would uh, <coughs> go ahead and put that in my y equals negative 3x squared plus 2x plus 3. And then just use my table. And if you have your table set right, you hopefully do, which um, I do not. So I'll change my table set to start at 0 and go by 1s. And so if we have the table set correct now, we can go here and we can see that uh, what is our answer at 4? Well, if x equals 4, y equals negative 37. So the quickest and easiest way to make that prediction is to go ahead and just use the uh, table function on your calculator. So the uh, next problem I want to look at here is uh, number 24, which is ultimately the same question, just to uh, review. So we go through the process a couple times so you can see again. We do this time stat edit, and our points here are negative 2, 0, and 4 are the x values. Y values are 12, negative 4, and 12. And again, we're just asked to do quadratic regression, and so therefore it's a calculator problem completely. Do the same thing we did last time. And we get our answer, which is y equals 2x squared minus 4x minus 4. And in this particular problem, that's all we had to do is just come up with the equation. We don't have to make a prediction or anything else. We just are there and can be done. And the uh, last two problems that we have on the practice test that we haven't done yet, let's uh, go to number 20. And in number 20, we have uh, a, an equation that uh, gives us profit. It's measured in hundreds of dollars. And the x here depends on the number of units we produce per week, and the number of units is in, a thousand, is in thousands. So in part A, we're asked for, with this uh, real life equation, we're asked for how many units should the company produce per week to earn the maximum profit. Now, looking at this uh, equation here, we can see that it's an upside down parabola. It's got a negative A value here, which means it opens down. So that means there is a maximum. So we can find the maximum in many ways. We can, use the, uh, we can find the vertex by using the vertex formula, negative B over 2A. Um, or <coughs> we can use calculator because it's a calculator problem ultimately. So if we put in our uh, negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 10, and we hit graph here, we're on a standard zoom here. We may or may not be able to see the maximum. We cannot see it, in fact. So therefore, uh, we'll change our window a little bit here. So let's go up a little bit higher. So let's say we go to 15 in the y direction. And now we do see the maximum. And so let's go ahead and find it. Or we second calc maximum command. We're to the left of the maximum, which is good, so we'll hit enter there. Move it over to the right of the maximum. Hit enter. Move it back to the middle. Hit enter. And we get our maximum here. And keep in mind, interpreting this value here that we get as 1, because it's equal to 1. And so we get our vertex for that particular one is 1, 12. Now, just to uh, answer the question then, what we had here says, how many units should the company produce each week to earn the maximum profit? So how many units is x? The, fa the profit itself is 12. So to answer the question for part a, we want to make sure we answer it correctly, though. Does it mean one unit? No, because units here are measured in thousands, it says. So we'd say a 1,000 units would be our final answer for that part. And then for the profit part, the maximum weekly profit is at $12. No, because ultimately the p here, the profit, is measured in hundreds of dollars. So we'd say it's $1,200. go there. Okay. And then the uh, final problem that we have here is number 25. Let's make sure we can answer the uh, questions correctly here for this one. It says we have a uh, model for the height of a toy rocket shot from a platform. And they give us an equation for that. Notice that it is an upside down parabola again, where time is measured in seconds and y is measured in feet. So graph the function on your calculator. So let's do that. We got negative 16x squared plus 110x, plus 5. And if we graph this, if we just hit graph with our standard window, we may or may not see much. We can see part of it. We know it opens up, or opens down, I should say, so it must go up here somewhere. It's going to need to be quite a bit higher. I would probably use my table if I were you to see what the values are like. You know, so we're at 0, 5, then it goes up to 189, and then starts going back down. So that gives us some insight as to what the window should be. Um, so let's make this 200. We'll go scale 10 here. So let's see if we get a little better picture of our parabola, and we certainly do. And ultimately, it says find the zeros of the function with your calculator. Uh, I'm going to change the window a little bit in the y direction here. I'm going to go negative 100 here just so I can see the um, zeros a little bit better. I think I'm not so close to the bottom. 
And so <coughs> with that, we'll go our zero command, make sure we're to the left of the zero, which means below it as we're going up, hit enter, go over to the right and hit enter, go back to the middle and hit enter. And we get one of our answers, which is negative uh, 0 0.045. So that's one of our zeros. If we do the uh, zero command again, on the second one, which is over here on the right-hand side, make sure we're to the left of it, which is above it when we're going down. And we'll hit enter, go to the right of it, go back up to the middle, and find the other zero, 6.920. So those are the two zeros as it asks for in part B. And in part C it says, uh, <coughs> what do the zeros represent? Well remember, ultimately this is uh, the Y is the height. If I'm, at, um, if I'm at height zero, which is ultimately where I'm at when I have these zeros, that means that uh, the rocket would be on the ground. So we'd say the rocket is on the ground. That's what the zeros represent, the times. Write that, put that in parentheses, so the times when the rocket is on the ground. And in part to see it also asks us, are they realistic? Well, in terms of realism here, in terms of shooting this rocket off, the one that's realistic here is the positive one. So we'll see the positive one is realistic. Because that's ultimately when the rocket, <laughs> after it's been shot, is going to be on the ground again. And then finally, uh, part D says use the calculator to find out how high the rocket flies before hitting the ground. And that's going to be very similar to the problem we just did with the maximum. We need to find that maximum point. So let's go ahead and find it. Move our maximum command, get over to the left of the maximum and hit enter. Go to the right and hit enter. Go back to the middle and hit enter. And we get our maximum here. As we can see, the, the Y value is what we're interested in, in here in part D. And the Y value is 194.0625. And the units here are feet, so make sure we put 194.0625 feet. And the times up here also, we should uh, put labels on those too. Should be seconds. And that'll do it. So ultimately, in a problem like that, we're looking for zeros. We use the zero command. If we're looking for a maximum or a minimum, we can use the maximum or minimum command, both of which are in the calc menu above your trace button. So with that said, we uh, are now complete with our chapter seven, and so. Therefore, uh, again, strong suggestion would be to make sure you go and uh, practice some of your homework problems, which have uh, similar problems to these, so that uh, come test time, you can uh, handle these problems with no problem whatsoever. So, good luck.